Good morning, good morning, and welcome here to Village Hills Fellowship. Thank you for joining us on another Sunday. This is the day that the Lord has made. I could say that every Sunday. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Do you recognize that this is the day? Not that just that it's Sunday, but that this is the day. He made this day. He went before us on this day. He fashioned everything and allowed everything to come into place on today. So this is the day. Your tomorrow will be the day. Your Tuesday will be the day. But today is the day that the Lord has has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's a, it is a posture of our hearts. It's a choice that we make each and every day. It's a challenge too, because we never know what we're going to face. But knowing that God made the day, right? Then because we know that, we can rejoice in that day and be glad. Hallelujah. So today we're going to rejoice and we're going to be glad. God is so good. He's so amazing. He has brought us a mighty long way and he's yet doing it. He's yet keeping us, yet sustaining us, yet providing for us, yet helping us in our um, go through our hills and our valleys to, um, to walk through our storms and our, the valley of the shadow of death. God is yet doing and he never fails. He never ceases. And so we thank God for being God. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for joining us, whether you're in the building or whether you're joining us online. We do pray that you are doing well and that you're walking with God um, through each moment of your day. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we're going to get ready to get started. We'll open with a word of prayer and then we'll have our scripture reading. If you want to go ahead and get yourself ready to hear the scripture, um, we'll be coming from Psalms chapter 24. And so you can go ahead and prepare that. But in this moment, we're just going to take a time to pray, to posture our hearts before God and to be prepared for what he's going to do. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we worship you. We thank you. We honor you. Let's just go into a moment of worship. Hallelujah. Lift up your voices. Thank you, Lord. As we prepare to um, have prayer in, in, in this moment, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We want to say, Lord, you are worthy. Oh, God, we bless and magnify your name. Oh, God. Hallelujah. God, we would not dare come into your house or come into your presence and not worship you and not thank you and not honor you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Not give Give you what you are due. Lord God, you are worthy and you are due the honor. Lord God, we thank you. Oh, hallelujah. We bless you. Oh God, you are great and mighty, Lord God. You are majestic, Father God. God, you are the very air that we breathe. God, you are the song that we sing, Father God. It's because of you that we can live and move and have our being. Oh God, I bless you today, Lord God not just with the with my lip service God but I bless you in my heart God I bless you in my mind God I bless you and I give you praise I give you glory hallelujah Lord God because you Lord God cause us to triumph Lord God you still the hand of the enemy oh God it's you oh God it's you oh God hallelujah God I bless you today oh God I will give you the sacrifice of praise God I will open up my mouth God I will bow my knees before you Lord God God, I will give you worship on today, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh God, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you for looking beyond my faults, Lord God, and knowing that I needed a savior. God, I thank you for sending your son, Lord God, in that while we were yet sinners, God, you sent your son to die for our sins. Oh God, I thank you. I thank you for being mindful of me. What is man that thou art mindful of us? Oh God, but you are, and you know the very number of the hairs on our head, oh God. You know our thoughts, oh God. You know our heart, Lord God. Thank you, Father Jesus. And we ask you, Lord God, to purify us, oh God. Sanctify us, God. Cleanse us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, take away every distraction, oh God, in the name of Jesus that will prevent us from drawing close to you, Lord God, in this moment. God, I pray, Father, that you would meet the needs on today, Lord God. I pray, Father, that you would speak through your manservant, oh God, and challenge and convict our hearts, Lord God, to come and to um, correct our behaviors and come, Lord God, and ask Ask you for help and come, Lord God, and, and come to know you in a deeper and more fervent way, Lord God. We ask you to be with us today. 
Oh God, you are welcome. Oh God, you are welcome. Oh my God, you are welcome, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. We honor you today, Lord God. And we pray, Father, that you would be glorified in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Praise your God. Oh, worship him. Oh, hallelujah. We give you praise, Lord God. We bless you, Lord God, today, Father, for you are great and mighty. You are wonderful, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, how he saved me from myself, how he protected me, how he's kept me, my soul must cry out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to prepare to read our scripture, Psalms 24. I won't read the whole thing, even though I love the entire chapter. <laughs> but we will focus, um, <clears throat> thank you, Jesus, on 7 through 10. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, I said we was going to, yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Psalms 24, verse 7 through 10. It says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Hallelujah. And the King of glory shall come in. Hallelujah. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in, banner, in battle. Verse number nine says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall, not that he might, he shall come in. Verse 10, who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody want the king of glory to come in today? Hallelujah. Well, come on, let's lift up our heads. Hallelujah. Oh, ye gates. Thank you, Jesus, for the Lord strong and mighty. Hallelujah. He will come in. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we bless you and we thank you. Lord God, let us not just be hearers of your words, but to be doers also. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to prepare for worship. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Show me the love. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, we asking you to settle here, Lord God. Oh, be in this place with us, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. You are welcome here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Purify our hearts, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Purify our hearts, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sanctify our hearts, Lord. Sanctify our hearts, Lord. We'll sing it again. Hallelujah. Purify. Purify our hearts, Lord. Purify our hearts, Lord. Mm -hmm. Sanctify our hearts, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Sanctify our hearts, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we need you. Thank you, Jesus. We need to see you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're desperate for you. Now let your glory settle here. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, purify, purify our hearts, Lord. Mm -hmm. Purify our hearts, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sanctify our hearts, Lord. That's what we need today, oh God, hallelujah. Sanctify our hearts, Lord. Oh Lord, we need you, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh Lord, we need you. We need to see you. for you now let your glory settle here thank you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah settle here hallelujah Jesus anybody want him to settle here settle here yeah Oh, settle here. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, would you purify, purify our hearts, Lord? Yeah, purify our hearts, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Sanctify our hearts, Lord. Sanctify our hearts, Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody need him today, God? Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, we need you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We need to see you. Yes, we're desperate for you. Now let your glory settle here. Jesus, hallelujah, Lord God. Mm, yes, settle here, Lord, we are waiting. Settle here. We are waiting. Yes, we are, God. Settle here. Hallelujah. Settle. Settle here, God. We are waiting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Settle here, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We are waiting, and you are welcome. We are waiting, and you are welcome, Lord. Settle here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Settle here. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Set all here. Oh, Holy Spirit, set all here. Mm, yeah, 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 yes. Holy Spirit, oh, set all here. Holy Spirit, mm, set all here. Hallelujah, hallelujah, set all here. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, oh, set all here. Oh, yes. 
Hallelujah, said all here. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Go back to purify. Hallelujah. Purify my heart, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Purify my heart, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sanctify my heart, Lord. God, we need you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sanctify my heart, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we need you. Yes, God. Hallelujah. We need to see you. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're desperate for you. So let your glory settle here. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. Let it settle here. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let your spirit, God, settle here. Let your joy, oh God, let your peace, Lord God, let it settle here. In our hearts, Lord, in our minds, settle here. Oh, God, we need you. Oh, yeah, yes. Settle here. We are waiting and we're looking for you to settle here. Yes, God, hallelujah. Oh, settle here. Would you purify us, oh God? Purify our hearts, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Purify our hearts, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Sanctify our hearts, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Sanctify our hearts, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, oh God. Oh, Lord, we need you. Thank you, Jesus. We need to see you. Yes, Lord, Jesus. And we're desperate for you. So let your glory settle here, yeah, yes. Let it settle here. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. Oh, settle here, yes. Settle here. We bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, we want you to settle in this place, Lord God. We ask you to have your way, Lord God. We ask you to move, Lord God, and fill the room, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Mm, yes. Oh, hallelujah, have your way, oh God, have your way, Jesus. Oh God, we put ourselves, Lord God, we humble ourselves, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Holy Spirit, feel the room, feel the room, feel the room, feel the room. Feel the room, feel the room, feel the room, feel the room, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, feel the room, feel the room, feel the room, feel the room, Holy Spirit. 
Spirit. Fill the room, fill the room. Oh, fill the room, fill the room. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Fill the room, fill the room. Oh, fill the room, fill the room. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. As you fill the room, fill the room, 
as you feel the room, feel the room, sanctify us, Lord, and purify us, Lord, as you feel the room, feel the room, as you feel the room, feel the room, you are welcome, and we my heart, Lord, feel the room, feel the room, yes, feel the room, feel the room, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, feel this room, feel the room, feel Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just feel the room, Lord. Just feel the room, Lord. Feel the room, Lord. Just feel the room, Lord. Just feel the room, Lord. We lay our hearts before you Jesus oh fill the room Lord we lay our insecurities before you Jesus oh fill the room Lord oh fill the room Lord we lay our brokenness before you Jesus will you fill the room Will you feel the room? Will you feel the room? Mm. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, feel the room, feel the room, feel. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Fill the room. Yeah. Oh, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. Amen. Fill the room. Fill the room of our hearts. Amen, amen. God bless you all. Appreciate you all joining us today. Amen, amen. God bless you all. Pray that you're all doing well. Amen. God bless you all. Uh, today will be a little bit different today when we think about fill the room of our hearts. There's a lot of times when things occur within us that seem to cloud our day. Seasons and years of our lives go by and we can't see clearly. So I had a message I wrote out. It was going to get some folks. Actually, all of us. It was a message to check us all and to kind of get us back in line. But uh, this morning, I had a, a moment with the Lord, and so I want to change the direction of the message. So I'm not really sure where this is going to go. I have a couple of scriptures, but I probably won't share any uh, 
uh, if any of the little if any of the message I had originally. But I'll leave the title the same. So the title of the message is I Can See Clearly Now. So for those of you that heard the song from this from 1972, amen. You know, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. It says gone are the dark clouds that had me blind. It's going to be a bright bright sunshiny day right so most of us know the song but what i want to share with you today is a different perspective because a lot of times when we are going through dark seasons and dark moments of our lives they begin to cloud how we see god they begin to cloud our ability to believe beyond the situation it causes our faith to be shaken where we're not really sure if this thing is really going to work out. Can I trust that the God that I read about in the Bible is going to come through for me in this situation? The cloud is so dark that it seems like we'll never get out of it. But because of it, we often, if we cannot see clearly, we can't see God clearly, then when he brings us out, or even if, for some of us, because sometimes you have to be in a certain position in order to receive from the Lord. And there's sometimes when you ain't did nothing you're supposed to do, and God brings you through it by grace and mercy. Some of us have been there. And definitely the Israelites, we read through scriptures, Israelites were brought through a lot of situations by the grace and mercy of God and through the faith of one person that was, that was faithful in the midst of the things. But then we find ourselves sometimes in the same situation. So then it's like, what do I do? Even though I sing songs about God and praise and hear how nothing is impossible for God. I read the scriptures daily. I go to church every week. I don't miss a service. I go to Bible study. I'm reading, I'm studying. But somehow, this dark cloud, this season that I find myself in is not allowing me to see God differently. And then we begin to ask, is it me? What's wrong with me? Maybe it's someone else. Maybe something else. I don't know. But we begin to look at ourselves like, what, what is it with me? Why am I going through? Why am I not seeing God differently? And sometimes we don't always have a moment where we can just pause and ask ourselves that question. Because we're so busy looking at the dark cloud that's around us. And really today, the most emotional part for me, we're going to get to a scripture at, at some point. I do have some scriptures. I'm, I'm going I'm to testify and I'm going to go to some scriptures here in a little bit. But when I really thought about the shift in the message, uh, I was thinking about, you know, because you all know that I, I have some points. I'm a teacher. And we can always go off of some points. So I had like five points. Did I have five points yet? I have five points. Again, like most weeks I have three to five points. And I was building out, I had four, and I was about to add the fifth one. And the fifth one which really brought tears to my eyes because I began to think about my own life and scenario. So I share with you some things I haven't shared publicly uh, before, but I think it gives some context to what we're experiencing. So back in 2018, most of you know my father passed away from brain cancer. And I was home during that time. I did not want to be home. I did not want to see my father die. I didn't want to see my father in that situation. I didn't want to see his health like that. I never thought in a million years that I'd ever stand over my father's, father's coffin and, and, and be one of the last people to ever see him on this earth. I did not think that would ever occur in my life. And it did something to me. Like there was, like, I don't know what it is, like a switch that flipped. Off. I can't seem to switch it back. Uh, I go to work, and work is not the same. When I went back to work, I'm like, man, y'all are talking about some of the wrong stuff. These reindeer games, I don't have time for this. And I was going through a lot of things in my marriage at the time, and it got to the point where, like, January of 19, I just couldn't take anymore. So I told my wife at the time, I said, look, I need to move out for, like, six months. I need a minute. I said, it's too much. I, you know, I, I need to be able to, to deal with my father and his death. How do I deal with that, right? Because, you know, my father wasn't a very emotional person. I wasn't at the time. And, you know, sometimes we had some issues in our relationship. But I had this swell of emotions that I hadn't been able to get out. 
right? Because when my father died, right, I'm in the house when he died, right? We're in the house. We wasn't in the room because there was someone from the hospice care. They was coming, the chaplain came, and they was talking to us and asking all these questions. I'm like, look, man, don't ask me all these questions. Get to the point, and then we'll, ask, we'll, we'll answer the questions later, right? So I could hear my father breathing because he was breathing real heavy in the back. And then, you know, I'm talking, we're listening to the guy talk, and then my sister was like, well, let me go check on him real quick. And then she yelled, like, hey, come, come quick. You know, and then, you know, my father was gone, and, and I just stood there for a minute. You know, my, my mom, you know, closed his eyes, and we're looking, and I just walked outside. I walked outside, you know, and I just started crying. You know, just, just, just crying. I just needed a minute. And at that moment, the Lord was like, Hamp, I need you to go back inside. And I was like, no. I was like, no, Lord, I don't want to go back inside. I need a minute. I need a minute to, to you know, process what's happened to my father. And my father's gone. I said, Lord, the plug don't send me back in here. He said, Hamp, I need you to go back inside because I need you to see some things and I need you to serve. So, you know, I, I, I went back in and my father had a friend. His name was Gerald. God bless him. You know, he is a pastor. And, um, you know, Gerald... You know, I never, I never went through the process of seeing, you know, someone that passed away. So I learned a lot from that situation. I learned a lot from just watching him, right? How he handled us as a family, the things he did and executed, right? So those things I need to learn. I need to be there for my mom. I need to make sure that my father was honored. You know, so I had to suppress a lot of feelings. And then on top of that, things going on in my marriage, and I was like, I don't think I can take all of this, right? You know, my health was declining. I was like, I need a minute. So I did the math. I was like, you know, I can, I can afford to take care of both houses if I moved out. And I just said, I need a minute. You know, I just, I need some time to, you know, process this. You know, how do you, how you deal with that? Thank you. You know, how you deal with, you know, um, you know, because these are all new feelings, you know? And, and then as soon as I said it, the first thing that came out my, wife's ex-wife mouth was I want a divorce and I was like what what are you talking about you know I was like I just need a minute you know and then she gave a very specific answer why it was I was like I, I, I was shocked that she I mean it was very thought out but I said okay fine and because God had already told me God would tell me months prior like when she wants to leave let her leave don't say nothing and you know so it went from me trying to find a moment to mourn and grieve for my father, deal with my relationship, to I'm a bad man. I mean, I got drugged through the mud. Nobody cared that my father died. Nobody cared that I was going through it. People just kept coming at me, talking bad about, I don't know, they was making up all kinds of foolishness. There was stuff coming out of people's mouth that I can't believe you ain't going through this and this, that, and the other. And I just sat down and didn't say nothing. I took it. I took it all. You know, everybody was calling, uh, texting me or saying something on Messenger or something like that. I took it. But we don't think about the dark clouds that people go through. We don't look at that. We just look at people like, I need something from you. But people don't look at us and say, what was taken away from that person to get to where, where they at? We don't think about the dark clouds that surrounds a person daily. People going through hell every day. And all we can sometimes think about is what they can do for me. And when you can't do for me or act the way I need you to act, then I'm going to villainize you. So I was. I was a villain. I was the monster of the story. Cool. But what I learned from this, and this is going in, let's go to uh, Romans 12. Go to Romans 12, hold Romans 12, uh, 1 and 2. Because what happens is there's a point in our lives when we have to choose who we're going to be. Because the dark clouds have the, the very opportunity to destroy you and to destroy your future. The, exactly. Because unless you see God clearly, you ain't getting out. You can't get out on your own anyway. It's not by your own strength. It's by his might, by his spirit, says the Lord, right? Not by power, not by might, but by his spirit. But there's times when I got to be in the right place and be doing the right thing to see God clearly. I need to do that because without faith, it's impossible to please him. So one thing I learned during this time, right? Let me read the scripture to you and then I'm going to come back to y'all. I'm going to read, I'm going to get through it, and I'm going to back up so I can show you guys what to do when you're in it. So in Romans 12, I'm going to read one to two. I'm going to read from the Amplified. 
It says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, dedicating all of yourselves set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes, so that you may prove for yourselves what the, good, what the will of the God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. Now, I tell you, after all that I shared, I thank God for my ex-wife. Because without her, I would not be the man that I am today. That is most definitely sure. Some of the things that you go through in life has opportunities to shape and mold your character. Regardless of what somebody's doing. Regardless of where they're going at. You look, you look at Joseph, all the stuff Joseph went through. It was shaping and molding his character so that his brothers, so he was sold into slavery twice. He was accused of attempted rape. He went to jail for no reason. He knew it was wrong. But he didn't allow the dark cloud to destroy the moment that God had for him to come out of that and to be in charge, second in command of all of Egypt and to save the world. Because the famine hit the world and he saved the world. And then to come back to his brothers later on when the prophecy and the dream comes to pass, after all they lying and all the other stuff they were doing, because they were still lying, he comes back and say, hey, I know what y'all meant for evil, but God meant it for good. That means somebody in his, it, within himself, he began to process the dark cloud. So that he can come out of it and do and be exactly what God called him to do and be. And that is exactly where we need to be. So I tell you, because what I learned in this season, because in the season, before the season occurred, where I started going through all this stuff, I was one that I always wanted to be in public to look like a, a great person, right? I, I always, I, my desire is to be the same that I am in public as I am in private. But I was really, like, there were some times when I was definitely faking during some of them years. And I would fight people for, to, for my persona to make sure it wasn't injured in public. So during that time, as, my, as I'm being drugged through the mud, right, I'm hurting. There was people at my job wilding out. I, I had to fuss one guy out in the... We in the commander, the command section of the wing, right? Some of y'all military members know what I'm talking about. The top enlisted person. I'm in his house, in his office, yelling at him at the top of my lungs. Right? I know everybody heard what I said because he said some stuff to me I didn't appreciate. <laughs> I, I was not in a in a good space in some of those moments. I'm not playing that. There's people that made life extremely hard for me. But what I realized and understood. There came a moment like around the end of January 2019, if I do right by everybody, including my ex-wife, no matter what people say or do, God going to take care of me. And I promise you, I told y'all before, since that moment, God has always come through. No matter how crazy my situation looked, no matter how impossible it seemed like, how in the world are we still here, how are we still doing what we're doing, God has still been faithful. If I just held on. No matter what people say. Let people, let the peanut gallery talk. See, that's why God, Jesus didn't put his trust in a man. He talked about that in John 2 in the Amplified. Because man is superficial and fickle. I'm not putting my trust in you. Because you have me up, you have me down. So one thing I learned here, keep your mouth shut. Don't say nothing. Let people say and believe whatever they want to say. Somebody say something to me crazy. Hey, I'm sorry that you feel that way. That's not between you and I. It's between um, my wife and my ex-wife and, and, and I. God bless you. Take care. You know, I'm not arguing with nobody. I ain't got time. And I needed to, to stay and have a moment to work on me so I can stop thinking about what, what she was doing, what anybody else is doing. This isn't, even in this message, I'm not trying to, to put any blame on nobody. I'm not even talking about everything anyway. That's not my point. My point is to share that we go through things that's super hard. A lot of us. A lot of us have a heart. My heart is not like your heart, but it's hard. And in those moments, in the moments of the dark clouds, 
They want to pull you to all type of debauchery and sin. Right? I told y'all, like, I'm one that, that dates all type of women. I grew up womanizing, looking at pornography. God's telling me, like, when you get with Yolanda, like, he was telling me that, like, 2018, like, early 2018. I was still married. Like, 2018, God's, like, prepping me, like, all year. Like, you need to, you know, you need to do all these different things. And God's, like, you need to have, make sure pornography is done with by the time you, you with her. It need to be done over. I don't know when the last time I looked at pornography. It's been years. I don't even know. But he said, then he'd be dealt with, right? By his, by his power and might. But when the dark cloud comes, a lot of people begin to reach back to those sins that gave them comfort before. They begin to reach back to pornography. They be, reach back to drugs. They reach back to drinking and smoking weed. They reach back to robbing and thieving and, and hanging around the wrong people because they're trying to find a release out of the cloud. If I can just find a moment out of the cloud. I told you there were women around me that I was talking about. One of them was telling me, I can't say too much about it. One of them was telling me like, Ham, you know, we can't see each other until till you divorce. So which kind of gives you a, a, an understanding of where they at. Now, I was thinking about it all the way up until the divorce cycle. I was, but I was like, I, Ham, I can't do that. Right? I already know where I'm going. I don't want to put myself in that situation. People ask them to come over. You know, there's opportunities. I'm by myself. There's opportunities. Look at pornography. No, I'm not doing that. Because at some point, y'all, for me, I had to have a change. Now, do I get everything right every day? No, I do not. But when you look back at this scripture, it says, but be transformed progressive and progressively changed as you mature spiritually. Now, Everything that I went through in one season of my life prepared me for this season. If any person in this household that I'm in right now had ran across me at 29, I'm, I'm about to be 49 in a couple weeks. You ran across me at 29, we would not be together right now. I can promise you that. We will not be. It would be over. You don't want that person. Right? I, I can promise you. Nobody wants that person. But when we go through seasons of life, God uses every season, whether good or bad. Remember we talked about count it all boy joy when you go through diverse temptations. The temptations are a, a, an experiment of good or an experience of evil. All of those seasons have an opportunity to shape and mold your character. So when I look back, all of those seasons shaped and molded me for who I am and where I'm at today. And I thank God for that. I don't thank God for a divorce. It wasn't something I was expecting. It wasn't something I was looking for. But there's things that happen for God's glory. And I understood that. I come to understand how serious and how significant it is to do God's will and to focus on his purpose and plan. That's what matters in the world. And sometimes we caught up. Sometimes our dark clouds can be, as I talked about on Wednesday, we talked about in Bible study about the cares of this life, the riches of life, all the drama and chaos. We got we too caught up in that and it allows the fruit to be uh, it allows it to be us to be unfruitful. But God allows us to go through a season in order to mold us, to shape us for the next. And it was hard. It was hard not to process my father's death. I only get that in pockets and windows at times, like, like this morning. I don't have moments where I can just go on a retreat for a few weeks, right? Or like, what, what, uh, what was that? Um, Aaron Rodgers, right? You go on this darkness retreat for a few days. Like, I don't, I don't have that in my life. We just run it. I feel like David during the seasons when he was being chased by Saul. It's like you go through one thing, and then one, as soon as you out of that one, like something else, somebody else waiting on you. And we've been fighting, like, for the last, like, what, four, four plus years, man. I feel like other than nine months, man, I've been fighting. And you get tired, physically tired. But what happens if we don't allow the dark clouds to continue to consume us, right? Because they do, and it's heavy, and you got to keep going back to God. Remember what I talked about. I've had to go back to God continually to go back so that my mind is changed. But what I want y'all to do, I want to read a few scriptures to y'all, and then we're going to hold there and we're going to close. Let's go to Proverbs 18 and 10. Y'all all right? It 
So it says here that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. When you are going through a dark cloud, a dark season, I've lived it. I've been through it. I can go through it and smile in all those people's faces that have talked back. A lot of them. I've seen a lot of them since then. I've seen them to their face. And I've treated them as if they have never wronged me. Because that's what, that's what forgiveness is. It's treating a person as if they never wronged you. And I have. I've treated just about all of them without, you know, the only time I may have done something different was because I wanted to make sure I wasn't being offensive to them. But I acted the same way. Because I had to learn that in, in God, right, I read, I read Acts 17, 28 in a second, but it's in him, right, in him that you get out. It's in him that he keep you. It's him that deliver you. It don't mean that it, it just happens immediately. See, when we think about a pro, when we think about 1 Corinthians 10, 13, right, there's no temptation that's not common to man, right, but God is faithful. Right? And then he'll give you, he won't allow you to, he won't give you more you can bear, but with that temptation, he'll give you enough. Let me, let me read it. Hold on, I'm about to put this thing wrong. Hold on, let's go to 1 Corinthians 10, 13. I don't want to read it wrong. Okay, so look. I'm going to read from King James. I don't want to get it wrong. All right, it says, There hath no temptation taken you, but, is common, but such is common as man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above uh, that which you are able, but with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be, be able to bear it. So what happens is that God, and we talked about this before, God will give you a way of escape, but you're going to still have to go through it. Like, you don't, we don't, and it, see, a lot of times, even me, I just want a quick ex exit. I want to keep, I want a quick off ramp, man. Get me out of this, Lord. I don't want to be in this no more. Right? God's like, no, nah, you're going through, homie. You're going through because it's for character development. Because if you look at this dark cloud correctly, oh, you can say what it is. But there's a way to handle it in a way that will be God-honoring, God-pleasing, and you will grow in maturity, right? Because remember, going back to uh, Romans 12, right, we grow little by little, right? You grow incrementally in spiritual and spirituality, right? It says... Uh, Transformed and progressively changed. Come on, y'all. I'm progressively changed to reflect his character and nature. But it begins when I just go back to him. Some of us are at our wits end and we got to go back to him. Some, I, some people right now that's listening to me right now and will watch me in the future, you're going through it right now. And you do not know how you're going to get out. And you must, above all, just keep your mind on Jesus. It's his name. Sometimes you can't pray a prayer. There's times, man, when I, like, I, I can't pray right now. I, I don't have a prayer within me. Now, now you're asking me to pray out loud, I ain't got nothing. I can say Jesus, and that's all I got for you. That's it. Jesus knows what I got in my heart. My heart been crying out to him. Like, I, you know, and then that's okay. I'm not here to appease somebody else. But I understand that if I just seek him, that's where it starts, y'all. When I'm going through a difficult season, don't allow the season to, 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 to draw. Because when you're going through it, all, all those begin, those sins that you used to be in, right? Because you can't tempt me with alcohol. You can't tempt me with drugs or smoking or something. Like, that ain't, that ain't my temptation, right? You can't really get, you can't get me with that stuff, right? You know, alcohol tastes like rubbing alcohol and beer tastes like salt water. I don't know how anybody drinks this stuff. To be honest, I have no idea. Like, honestly, I'm like, man, this stuff is nasty. This is, has to be, like, the nastiest stuff people created. How did people make money off this stuff? Like, I'm for real. Like, I have, like, no taste for that stuff. But, but for somebody else, dude, that's a problem. You can't get them. They, like, I used to know a guy that he was like, if I drink a drop of alcohol, I will not stop until I black out. I will wake up the next morning. And that's just, he in the military, and that's where he was. He's like, dude, I drink a drop. I'm, I'm, shutting the, I'm shutting the club or wherever I'm at down. That's not me. But in those moments of dark clouds, we try to find a release somehow, the quickest release that we possibly can because we want out of it. We want out as fast as possible. We don't see and understand that God has a big, right? When I'm in it, when I'm in the thick of it all, 
Like, I'm not looking at, oh, well, you know, God has a bigger plan right now, and he's about to work something out in my life and yours too, and then we're all going to give God some glory. We're not thinking about that. Right? All I know is it's dark, and I can't see my way out, and I see this woman. I see this drug. I see this over here that I know I shouldn't be doing, and it gives me some temporary relief. I just need something. Some people just do drugs just for that simple reason. But then we villainize the person that's doing drugs, but they, they don't know how else to get out. And then there you are, that got the Holy Ghost in you, and then we want to judge him. We want to crucify him at the stake. We want to throw rocks at him when they struggle. Somebody going through committed adultery, there may be a reason why that person did that. I'm not going to condone what you did. Look at what Jesus was doing. People, like when he caught the woman, the woman was caught in the act of adultery, right? On the downstroke. Come on, y'all. She in it. Caught in the midst of it. Where Jesus at? Jesus, by law, she should be stoned. And where the other guy at? Where the guy at? Because he should be getting it too. Right? Where's Jesus in all this? Showing some grace. Where are we at? Throwing rocks. Like, he, he without seeing cast the first, he, <laughs> he without seeing cast the first stone, we over there throwing them anyway. Like, you got some sin in your life. You shouldn't be throwing those stones. But there we are, you know, chucking away every day. Making life hard for people. Everybody going through it, y'all. Everybody. Every day, people going through it. Every day, people trying to make it. The people around you are trying to make it. Some people have unimaginable pains and, and devastating situations they're facing every day, and they just come to work. They stay quiet, and they go home. they like one situation away, one moment away from completely falling apart. But there you are making life hard for people. That's why we should never make hard, life hard for people. Even when we drive, and like, I'm convicted about driving. I shouldn't even be driving as aggressive as I drive sometimes because sometimes some people just driving on the road, man. I'm just, I'm just trying to stay focused. And by me driving all aggressive, right, I can be causing problems for somebody else. I need to be thinking about the needs of others above myself. If we are the ones, these earthen vessels that has the, the power of God, the same power that parted the Red Sea, the same power that has raised people from the dead, the same power that has delivered, stopped the sun from moving, brought rain, fire down from heaven, changed nations and generations of people. If we believe that, if we believed it, if we believed that nothing was impossible for God, if we believed that, what would our lives look like? Would I be going around judging people because they're going through it when I understand that the power of the living God, the almighty God, that's created everything we see and has the ability to give anyone wealth and to help anybody, why would we go around, we in the church, go around making life hard for another human being? When that power lives on the inside of you. That means there's a problem. And sometimes the reason why we can't see clearly is because we have the dark cloud and we allow the dark cloud to begin to shape and color our hearts. Because a lot of people that may have that perspective are hurting themselves. And they haven't taken the time to say, is it me? See, if we want to change, I'm going to go, I'm actually, now I'm going to go back, go to my, script, my, my scripture. Let's go back to Romans 12. Right, so it says here, be transformed and be progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, by focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is. That which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. So that's what he says. That's what he says. But then we have to ask ourselves, am I allowing myself to be transformed? See, is it me? That's number one. So number one, is it me? 
So we can read 2 Corinthians 13, 5, but there's a time when we're going through things where we need to stop and say, okay, is there something going on within me that needs to change? All right? There's people in, in relationships, you, you may see them, that if you've been married for any amount of time, been a friendship amount of time, you will know when your marriage stopped growing. You'll know the year. You may not know the exact moment, but you'll know the year when your marriage stops growing. You'll know, right, you'll see it because someone just chooses they don't want to grow anymore. They, they're tired of growing and doing any longer, right? You can understand that. So then you have to say, is it me that stopped growing? Did I allow, see, we sometimes we are in relationships with people and the relationship is so hard that we begin to slowly shut down ourselves. Like, you know, like, like I'm, I'm in my 40s right like now. I'm not, I'm not trying to fight people and argue like I was when I was 20, right? I don't have that kind of strength anymore. I'm tired. I just want some peace. I want to live at peace. I want to be peaceful. I want to be a peaceful person. That's where I'm at. But I have to ask, is it something in me, right? Because we're supposed to be moving from faith to faith to glory to glory. We're supposed to be growing. But then it may be something that's within me. And so I need to ask myself. I, I remember this, what brought me to my, think about my dad was because I wrote a book and, uh, called Can You Spare a Few Minutes. It was the first book I ever wrote on marriage. And when I get, went through my divorce, I took the book down immediately because I was like, man, I can't put this. Everything in it was true. Everything was in it was good. I just, I mean, I felt ashamed. I was like, I can't put this book out. But then, you know, like there's a couple they would call me, like, in the midst before I was divorced, they was like, before the divorce was finalized, they was like, Hamp, we need that book. I was like, I, I, I'm not selling that book no more. I took it offline. And she was like, no, mm -mm, that's the book God told me to get. I need that book. And I was like, I don't want to give it to you. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to give it to you. And I told her why. I was like, look, I'm going through all this stuff. I, I feel like a hypocrite. I feel like everything's not working. Even though she's like, is the stuff in it true? I was like, yeah, it's true. Right? But I'm going through this situation. God was telling me, he told me like a year and a half before I got divorced that there's redemption in divorce, Ham. Right? Because I didn't think there was. I used to believe like once you get divorced, you get the scarlet D on you and you, you know, off to the, you know, off you go to pasture. You know, you ain't nothing else for you. But, but then like she, she wanted to buy 50 books. She took, got 50 books, used it for a, a, a conference. Right? Came back to me last year. Like I said, the same thing. Books still ain't online. I still ain't brought it online. I was like, I'm not bringing it back online. So I recently brought it back online because the information in the book is true. And, uh, you know, it could be helpful to someone else, even though it may, you know, um, you know, my marriage was not, um, you know, my marriage did not end in the, in the way that I thought it would. You know, I thought I'd, you know, we'd die by death, you know, because God did so much. I mean, God was, would hospitalize one of us. If we talked about divorce, man, God would hospitalize us. Like, like so I was like, man, I, I never saw that coming, to be honest. Um, so it brought me to that. But in the book, I have a chapter where God told me to go talk to my wife at the time and just ask her what she thought was wrong with the relationship and don't say nothing. Right. And so he's like, don't say nothing. Just say, just say thank you and walk away. Right. Just listen to her perspective. And man, she, she said, you know, you ask someone what they think, you know, they're going to tell you. So she did. And so then I had to go back. Because a lot of times we'll take what somebody says and want to immediately fight them because they said it and it hurt and it stung. But we don't take the time to stop and say, you know what, is, is what they're saying true or, or, or on the side? What are they saying that's true and then what are they saying that's just them? Right. So then you need to sift that through. Right. We talk about you know, like some people talk about eat the meat and spit out the bones like I ain't doing that. But I, I didn't like bones, fish with bones in it. So I ain't even mess with them. So that should tell you something right there. That's a whole nother message. But what I have to do is, like, OK, I have to sift through like, OK, what is she saying that's true about me so I can correct me? Right. In a relationship, John, Pastor John Piper said the most important thing that you can ever do in a relationship is fix yourself. But in our relationship, what we do spend most of our years doing is trying to fix the other person. And then, which means we never fix ourselves, because it could be you. You know, I could be the fault, right? I have fault in why my marriage ended. It's not all, it's not like all her fault, right? There's fault to be given, right? And God said that, like, hey, you're not at fault. And like, it's not like you're not at fault for this relationship ending, right? You have some fault in this too. So there's two to tangle. But then we want to spend our time pointing the finger at the other person instead of asking, like, is it me? Number two, 
It begins with a choice. So in this situation, right, we have to, a lot of us want to put our relationship and just our lives on autopilot, right? There's things that we just don't want to think about, things we just don't want to do. And the one place that we can't do that with is our spirituality. Because if you ever, like when I was a kid, I used to walk up, I used to like, like walking up the ele escalator that goes down, right? So I would try to run up as fast as I can to see if I can get all the way up. But anytime you're on the escalator and you stop, you're just gonna slide right on back down. You just come on right back. Now I try to run back up as fast as I can, and then you know you stop and you'd be like, oh, I'm falling back down. That's how it is in faith. That a lot of us don't want to keep being active because we see how hard some situations are to get through. But in order to do that, I, I talked about being, you got to dip, right? You got to be deliberate, you got to be intentional, and you got to be purposeful. If you want to get through a certain season of your life, you want to get through it like unscathed, right? right? You want to get through it without like, like, oh man, by the grace of God, I made it out. Oh, Jesus. You know, one of these like, you know, I got burnt up and, you know, I had to go through it and I went through all this fire because it was all me and acting and seeing like not one of those moments, right? I have to continually say, you know what? It's hard, right? Because God's trying to bring us to maturity. What I'm going through right now, yeah, it's hard. It's probably harder than what I've experienced in, in probably my life. It's hard. I'm not going to lie. But even yesterday, like yesterday, man, it was, it was wild. Like yesterday, I'm trying to find somebody a house. You know, I'm watching my baby for a couple times here and there. I'm running out of the house. You know, and I was spun up all day. I couldn't even relax. I was, I was in Kobe mode like all day. I couldn't. When I was talking to Yolanda. I was like, I, I can't watch TV right now. I can't go. I can't relax. I'm too wound up. So I just started working on my website, and I was doing all this other stuff. You know, because until I could wind down, then it was like 8 o'clock. By the time, you know, we finally did the last thing for this house purchase for, this, for a client, right? So we, I sent the paperwork off, and I'm like, oh, man, I got to work on the sermon. And in those moments, I wanted to just shut down, start complaining and whining. But it's like, okay, him. You know, God told me that things were going to get a little bit tougher, and I need to be mature. So I can't handle things the way I always used to handle them. I can't just fly off the handle, start yelling at people and doing all this crazy stuff because I'm not in a good mood. There's a certain level of grace that God gives us all. Whatever he, like Yolanda was saying this the other day, uh, that, you know, whatever God calls you to, to, he'll bring you through, right? So whatever he brings to you in your life and you know what you're doing is a part of God's will, what I'm doing right now, I'm in the exact will of God. Right, so I'm doing what God's told me. That means there's a grace that he's going to give you to get through it. So even though there may be a dark cloud, right, even though we walk through, we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Talks about that in Psalm 23, right? I'll fear no evil, right, because God is with us. His rod and his staff will comfort us, right? So when I go through those seasons and situations, i got to do it in a mature manner. That means, like the other day, that means a couple days ago, I had to make a deliberate decision to say, Ham, we're not going to act like that no more. Right? That, that, there is a, that there's a way for me to handle that. And God got me through it. Right? Because I, I felt the moment when I was about to start breaking down. Right? You start having these defeating thoughts. And, you know, and it was like, no, nah, Ham, come on. We can't do that. Right? Let's get through the day. We're going to be all right. Let's go. Let's go. Right? We, we, let's go. We're going to get it. Let's roll. Right? We, we got to do something different. That... Sometimes you know that help will come. God's going to help you. He's going to give you grace. But, man, you got to stay in it. And sometimes running away ain't going to help. Yelling and screaming at people ain't going to help you. It's only going to make things worse. Kicking and punching walls. Come on, I've been there. Throwing stuff at people. I've been, I've been there, too. Throwing stuff and doing all, this, all these acting out. Like, that's not helping this situation. It only brings people further apart. So there's a grace that God gives you. But you have to make a choice to say, I want that. I want that for me. And I'm willing to grow up. Come on, y'all. Like, I'm talking to me. Like, I need to grow up. I need to be more mature so that I can handle what God gave me. Is it hard? Yes, it's hard having three jobs. I don't want three jobs. If it was up to me, I would not. But God told me to do them all, and I can handle them all. So if it was up to me, I only do one of those things. Right? But God said, no, you're going to do all three. So there's a grace that God gives me to be able to do them all and to handle the weight of all the other stuff we have going on in our household. There's a grace. But I have to find out what that is, and I have to be deliberate about it and intentional and purposeful. 
I can't just be flailing around here. Because a lot of us, including Hamp Lee, has been flailing around waiting for someone or for God to just do it for us. And there are times when God's just going to do something. And there's sometimes when I got to be in position and be ready. So that means I need to be in the right position. I can't be clowning and acting crazy and then waiting for God's grace to show up. I'm waiting for God to show up and show out. Well, well you, sir, ma'am, you showing out right now. And as my grandmother say, you showing your natural tail. So how in the world is God supposed to show up and show out when you in sin? How that going to happen? It don't work like that. But we act like that all the time. There's a grace. Number three, you must break out of the world's mode. Now this goes back to the scripture I said. It goes back to 12, right? That you be not conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs. Remember what I told you. When I let go of that when I went through in January of 9, 2019 and all them people start coming to me and, and, and uh, they're not FaceTime, but they're sending me message on face, uh, Messenger. They're sending me texts. They were saying all this stuff. A lot of stuff wasn't even true. I don't even know where you got that stuff from. When I just said, you know what? I'm not paying attention to you no more. I'm not, you know, you know what? In the court of public opinion, I'm guilty and I don't care if I'm guilty. And what really got me through that, y'all, what got me through that was I was watching, um, uh, Jamal Bryant, and I was watching Diedrich Haddon. During that time, Diedrich Haddon was on, um, what was that, the Preachers of L.A. at the time. And now, he, he had a different path than what I had. Now, I'm going to tell you, you know, I wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't doing the things that he had admitted to doing. But he had admitted, like, look, I was doing these things. I was in sin. I was doing this. I was living like this. And I used to watch, like, man, how is this guy at this level just a lot, you know, all these things is happening to him, and he's just still moving. And I was like, I need to learn how to do that, Lord. Like, I just need to learn how to be able to, to take this, this, you know, he talked about the, the hate and all the stuff that, you, that come at you, right, and still be able to walk forward. I'm not condoning what nobody do. But I was like, Lord, I don't know. I, I was watching that show. I was listening, watching videos, different things. Jamal Bryan, not so much, but I know his story. But then to see him and all the stuff he was accused of doing, right, I don't know if he ever admitted to any of that stuff, but he was accused of a lot of stuff. And then every week he just preaching and preaching and preaching. I was like, Lord, I need to learn how to do that. I need to learn how to, not so much like I'm just going to be sinning and living in sin and then how to do it, but like how do you get through when, when you're facing so much opposition and negative press, quote unquote press, how do you get through that and still be okay? That was an important lesson for me to learn. I thank God for that. I thank God for all of you. I thank God for every one of you that, that said something negative to me because it helped me to grow. Thank you. Thank you much. And I pray that God, and honestly, I pray that God will help you. I pray that there's no, no, no animosity toward me. I pray that you don't have any hate toward me. Because there's some people, y'all, that be connected to their friends and they connect to other people. They, they, that because your friend, because they friend hates you, they hate you. You know, they hate you just simple fact that they, their friend does. And some people like that. And so they have this hatred and unforgiveness towards you because you hurt their friend. Like, look, man, look, I, I'm not putting myself, I ain't going to hell for somebody else's friend. Right? You ain't sinned against me. You ain't do nothing. I ain't doing that. But I pray for them too. That God will help them. But I'm thankful. Because that situation that became, that was a dark cloud, helped grow me into be a better man. It helped me to be able to answer things more maturely and not to be superficial. Right? It says here, don't be, don't be in these superficial values. It helped grow me. Thank you. Like legitimately, it helped me to grow. See, we don't look at situations like that. I, now, I'm going to tell you, during that time, I wasn't looking at it like that. I just knew, Ham, hey, keep your mouth shut. And if you know, if you take care of people, if you do right by others, God will do right by you. That was the only thing I had in me. Right? I, and most of y'all know that year you follow me on Facebook, I had one message. I didn't stop preaching. I preached one message at Father's Day because God told me to. That was the only time. Until, I, until my divorce was final, you didn't hear nothing from me online. I wasn't doing nothing. I sat myself down because I needed it. So you have to break outside of that, right? And which, I'm going to try to finish this quickly, y'all. But what you need to do is you need to, you need to break outside the mold of what people put, in, put, in, put you into and also what you put on yourself. There's, see, when you're in certain relationships, people put you in a certain mold. As I told y'all, in my family, I'm still a little hemp. 
I'm, I'm 40, almost 49 years old. I'm the tallest person in my family, and I'm still little him. We have one of our family members, we still call him Baby J, and he's, and he's in his 40s. And he asks us, he's like, are y'all always going to call me Baby J? Yes, you are always going to be called Baby J. I don't call him Baby J. I don't think I've ever called him Baby J other than even now. Like, I've always called him by his first name. But sometimes we put someone in a box, then that's who they always are. And you have to see, and you've been in that box so long, it's like a coffin. And then you become dead. You can't live outside of what they put in, put you in, into. Come on, y'all. Some of y'all, y'all receive that when y'all receive that. Some of us have been put in a coffin, right? You can't live outside of what they put you into. You can't be free. You can just be locked in. You can't live like that because after a while, you begin to believe what they're saying. You can't believe that. You're a child of God. You're a child of the king. I remember, remember when I told y'all, remember when I told y'all I was, in, I was in Korea? I don't know if I, I may have shared this once or twice, but I was in Korea, when, I was the 2004 or 5, it was the, I mean, the hardest, the most temptation I ever, sexual temptation I ever experienced my whole life. I didn't know I was going, I didn't think I was going to get out of there without touching a woman. I mean, I'm for real. Like, I, like, I got out of there. God got me out of there. And when I got on the plane, I, I was like, Lord, I made it. I was like, man, I was about to cry. I was about to break down. I was like, man, I made it. I made it. You know, I'm on the plane. I'm, on, I'm in Seoul. I'm about to fly to Hawaii because my next base was in Hawaii. And there was a stewardess that ran up to me like, sir, uh, sir, you know, because I try to get like those exit seats. And I got the one on the front row. You know, they had the little TV right there. They had the, the little front row seat because I need some leg room. And a, the stewardess came up to me and was like, uh, sir, you're in the wrong seat. I was like, no, ma'am, I'm in the right seat. I was like, this is my seat. Here's my ticket. She's like, no, uh, grab your things right now. You're in the wrong seat. So then, you know, I said, okay, I don't know what's going on. So I go here. She takes me to first class and says, sir, here's your seat. I was like. I was like, what? I was like, man, I sat in that seat. Dude, I was crying. I was in like complete tears. I was like, man, I was done. I was like, God, oh God. You know, but in the moment, I was still thinking about all the stuff that I was getting in. I was like, like Lord, I got all through all the stuff. But I was sitting, there was sin, and I was thinking about all the sin and stuff. But like, God was like, Ham, I got you through this. Right? And he was like, Ham, well done. Like for this seat, like for that season. But sometimes we don't understand God's grace because we look at, what we didn't do, like, and in that moment, I couldn't enjoy it all the way because all I was thinking about was all the dirt that I did during the year. No, I didn't touch a woman, but man, I was looking at pornography during the year. I was struggling, man. I, man, that was, oh my gosh, that was hard. Year. I was like, like, almost every other day, I'm like, Lord, forgive me, Lord, God, Lord, I'm going to get out of this. You know, it was crazy. So I'm sitting there thinking about all the sin, all the negativity I did, right, when God had did something amazing. Right, I flew from Seoul to Honolulu first class. It was awesome. Right, it was awesome. It was amazing, right? And God blessed me. But so many times we can't enjoy God's blessings because we're thinking about all the negative that we did, right? God wants to bless us. But we got to break out of this world's mold. Number four, you must clear your heart and mind by using God's word or with God's word. And this is when you don't feel like it, homie. You ain't, there's some days when you ain't going to feel like, I'm going to do some scriptures today. You ain't going to feel like, I want to be nice today. You ain't going to feel like, I'm going to go and give when I don't feel like giving. That's some days that I'm a, I'm a, it's a sacrifice of praise. You're talking about a sacrifice of praise. There was a day a few weeks ago, God was like, hey, you're going to give me a sacrifice of praise right now. Because you don't feel like praising. I want to sacrifice. God told me, I want a sacrifice of praise now. You will praise me now. You're going to get out this funk. You will not, you will not go down the rabbit hole, right? Because I was about to go down the rabbit hole. God was like, no, you will, you will praise me now. Sacrifice the praise right now. Because it's through his word that we're freed, that we're cleansed, and we're renewed in our minds. It's through that. Number five, and I'm going to close. You must commit to the process, even when it seems like nothing's happening. Have you ever watched like clouds go by? There are some days when you can see a cloud go by and you can see it move. But there's some days when you can't. But then you look back 30 minutes later and it's not in the same spot that it was in. Sometimes that's how we're growing. Sometimes that's how life is for us. That we're growing and we're moving, but we may not see it. 
See, we're looking at TV and we're looking at all these people on Instagram and Facebook and all the things they do. Man, they faking. I'm telling you, they faking. They are actors. These are actors and actresses, right? Well, all of, they want to all be called actors, right? They are acting. I, there's people like for, like for me, I'm all about real estate. I've reached out to a lot of people that I see them on Facebook and on Instagram that I admire what they're doing. I reach out to them, hey man, what you doing? I love what you're doing. You know, how can I be a part of this or what, what, what you got going on? They're like, hey, are you in the crypto? I'm like, crypto, what are you talking about? Dude, you, all you talk about is real estate. They're not in that. See, all they're doing is faking. This is a way for them to get in. They're making their money by all, this other, all these other things. They ain't really living the way that they, that they portray that they're living. they faking it. You be one of the real ones that's out there. See, being real ain't, see, they don't want that smoke. But God looking for some people that do. So you got to ask yourself whether or not you're going to be one of them people. God looking for some real ones. He's looking for some real, some real OGs, some people that's going to be down. Who down with the, with the, with the click? Right? Who want to be down with this click? Most of us are like, I ain't, I ain't down with that. Right? Or you want to be, you know, like the song sing, a part-time lover. Like, God ain't looking for part-time lovers. He ain't looking for people at the, that's sneaking at the night. Come on, y'all. Some of us was like that. That was me. Right? I ain't calling a woman till 1030. <laughs> Come on, y'all. I know all about that. Nobody, ain't no man calling you at 1030 at night because he want to talk about how your day was doing. Because I sure wasn't. Come on, y'all. And so you looking for a part-time lover. God ain't the one. Because he said he wanted all. So some of us want part-time loving from God. We want all the good, but we don't want no bad. We want, God uses bad sometimes to mature us and to grow us into who he needs us to be. Because it's through those experiences. Let me explain something to you. It's through those experiences that soften a certain part of our heart. See, since 2019, all that stuff I went through, man, I've run across many people that are going through the same thing I'm going through. And I got a heart to help them. I've been preaching to you. I mean, the preaching has been deeper. I don't know what has happened, what God has done, but the preaching, the level of wisdom he's given me, all the things has been so much richer. And it's been this well of information that God has just allowed for me to just to dive into and to share with others. But we got to keep going, y'all. God wants all because he wants us to be a carbon copy of his son, Jesus Christ. That's what he's looking. He's looking. That, as my wife said, like he, he uses the bad and the hard. He looking. God don't waste nothing. The good, the bad, and the ugly. But that's why he says in, in, in James, let's go to James 1, 2 to 4, and we're going to close this out, y'all. I got to close. Y'all know I could preach like for years. I, I, I'm, at, I'm probably at the point in my life, I feel like I'm at, like with Paul. Like Paul preached so long one time, right? There was a guy that fell asleep and fell out the window. <laughs> He, he was preaching so long, the guy fell out the window, died. Paul had to go down there, rise, raise him up, and probably kept preaching. <laughs> I got to find that story. I was like, man, that's where I'm at now. Like, that's the grace God has given me. I praise God for that, man. I tell you. All right, my brethren, count it all joy when you go through diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying to your faith work in patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that she may be perfect and tired, one and nothing. Now, look at this now. I'm going to share with you, like, there's a grace that God, that God wants to give you that'll help you through this temptation. Like, sometimes it's an experiment of good, and sometimes it's an experience of evil. But when I can count it all joy and say, you know what, man? Like, I can feel that it hurt. Like, even when, when Joseph was going through, he knew he was being wrong, right? Because he named his kids after, you know, um, he, he named his kids, Ephraim and Manasseh, off of what he went through. Right, the struggle and the pain. So it's like it's not like he forgot about it, but he didn't allow it to shape and change his character about who he could be. Think about if he if he didn't do good, right, and he and it allowed his heart to be darkened, and now now he's second in command. Oh man, I would have literally. I told y'all I preached about that before. I would have mar I would have took the whole army of e Egypt and went down back home. We going right now. I'm who? I'm second in command. Get the army together. We gonna about to take a trip. We about to go down and see daddy. Hold on. You know what I'm saying? You know, it was like another seven years, right? Before he, what, what was it seven? No, like nine years. I think it was like nine years before. Because I think they were like two. They had the seven years of plenty. And then they was like, I think two years into the bad. Before he even ran across his brothers again, right? Nah, I would have been going immediately. 
right? That's what some, some of our hearts are. But when we begin to say, you know what? I want y'all to look at this. Because when you realize that God is a protector, he's a lover, he's a sustainer, he's a redeemer, he gonna keep you, he gonna keep your family, y'all ain't gonna be destroyed, y'all gonna be saved, everything gonna work out for good, everything. When you realize that, when you believe it in your heart, come on y'all, I'm talking about, I'm in the heart. I know I'm gonna be a better man. I know I'm gonna be a better father. I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a better friend. That God's gonna use me to touch and reach other people. I know that I'm gonna be a light for his glory. And sometimes a light for his glory means that we gotta go through some things. That's what you sign up for. See, that's why people need to count the cost. That's why we just so happy that people are making decisions for Christ. I ain't trying to make you a decision for Christ. You need to understand what the cost is first before you pay this cost, right? There's a cost that comes with serving the Lord Jesus. And we need to do that. See, that's why we need to stop. Like, look, man, this is what Christians go through. This is what disciples of Jesus go through. Do you want that smoke? If you want it, then here it is, right? But some people may not want that. But we want everybody in. Oh, man, I didn't have like 50,000 decisions for Christ. Okay, well, after five years, how many people are still serving? Oh, a couple? Okay, got it. Got you. No, we need people to be in for long haul. He's looking for some riders. We talking about, you know, everybody's talking about those years like with the ride or die chick. Well, God looking for some riders. He's looking for some ride or die. Right? You're going to be with him. Don't just be with me when it's good. Be with me when it's bad, but when you understand that God uses the bad to shape and grow you and to bring forth his glory, I'm telling you, even in this, God's going to do, doing this for his glory. We're going to grow, and we're going to be everything he wants us to be. But we got to stay in line. Like I, like I had the opportunity to touch on last week, we stay in line, and God's going to do a great thing. All right, y'all, where y'all at? I'm going to close now because I can keep preaching. I can preach all year. All right, y'all all right? Let me, let me see if y'all got anything. Oh, I'm, I'm looking on Zoom. We on Zoom. God bless y'all. Appreciate Wayne Easton joining us. Monica joining us. God bless y'all. All right, I'm back online on Facebook. Okay, Yolanda shared the story about uh, Paul and the man that fell out. That fell, that fell out. He done fell out and died and then <laughs> messed around God. And he probably raised him and kept preaching. Come on, y'all. All right, y'all. All right, y'all, so I just want y'all today, if I share nothing with y'all, my goal today was really to uh, just encourage your hearts. And a lot of people are going through a lot of things. Like, I got a lot going on, a lot of people. All right, let's show some people some mercy and some grace. All right, and even if you don't know what they're going through, it's, it's always important to be gracious because you never know who may need it, who may need a little bit extra in it. And sometimes the, the little bit that we can do for somebody, it don't cost nothing. It don't cost nothing but a little bit of time. All right, and a lot of us sometimes have some time to give to somebody. Amen. And just know that just just don't allow right. just work through this process. If, if you feel like your dark season that you're going through, this dark cloud, that's causing you to change your heart, to change who you are. And you know, go back to God like God is it me. Show me, Lord. Right. Show me. Reveal to me the contents of my heart. Show me who I am. If there's any wickedness that's within me. Right. Uh, David talks about that. And if it is, though, God, show me the way of righteousness. That I can be who you want me to be. I don't want to live my life in a way that doesn't please you. I don't want to live my life in a way that's, that's against, your, against your purpose and plan for my life. I want to be. But it's hard, Lord. And, and, and I'm struggling. Tell them where you're at. I'm struggling. I'm struggling to make it. Like some of us, we struggle. Right? Sometimes like we go up a weight class. Right? You went up a weight class. I went up a weight class. Over the last four years, I went up a weight class. And it was hard. And, and so God had to reel me back and like, okay, God, I, I got to my level because I told Yolanda, I was like, I think I, I, got, I think I hit the level. I hit my, my limit. God gave me like two weeks of reprieve and was like, Ham, it's about to get real hard. But I, he told me that, you know, he told me like, Ham, it's about to get a lot harder, but I need you to be more, I need you to be mature now. Right? It's like, he's checking and telling me like, Ham, it's about, you about to go in, but I need you to be mature. You can't handle the, handle the situation the way you handle it all the time. So now I need to do things differently. But I realize it's for his glory. And it's God will get you through it. God has got me through it. God has blessed me. He's blessed my family. He's going to get us through it. Everything that we have. I'm a, there's going to be a moment when I'm going to testify about everything God has done. Every, we, we still live in the testimony. But God is moving and he's working, right? We're about to go look at another church. There's a church for sale. Amen. It's on the historic list, so they can't shut it down. So we're about to, we're about to go look at that church. Like, right when we leave here and get, well, we go to Shipley's first. So we get some Shipley's donuts. Then we go. Then we go. We're going to go look at this church. Amen. Lord willing, there's an opportunity. But we're going to keep looking. We're going to keep believing. God, because God wants to do something. He wants to do something in us. And he wants to do something through us. All he needs you to do is give him your yes, right? 
and keep walking with him. There's some days that's going to be tough. There's going to be some days that you ain't going to want to be there. But keep showing up. Keep showing up. God is, God is there. He's going to help you. But don't allow your situation to change how you see God. Because God's still faithful. Just because you're going through it don't mean that you ain't blessed. Just because you're going through don't mean that God ain't with you. Just because you're going through don't mean that God ain't able. God may be working something in the background. Like, I can't deliver you right now because I, I got something over here that I'm trying to do. Right? So when I finish that over here and then, then I get you where you need to be, it's going to come in the middle. It's going to work out just great. I just need you just to hold on. Stay in line. Don't move. Keep trusting God. Amen. If you got any questions, problems, issues, y'all make sure y'all reach out to me. Amen. Or my wife. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, we thank you for this day you give us. Oh God, I thank you, Father, for giving us this opportunity. Oh God, I appreciate everyone that stayed with us and watched with us today. Father God, I pray that you'll bless them and keep them, Lord. Father, we just ask, Lord, that you help all of us, Father, in the midst of our situations, the things that we go through and experience in our lives, Father God. I pray that you'll show us, Father God, the way of escape, Father God. Help us, Lord God, to grow in maturity little by little, Father God, to be more and more spiritually mature, more and more like you, Father God. We need your help today, Father, and I thank you for what you shared today. I pray that your people were challenged, were convicted, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that they'll bring a moment, Lord God, of clarity for them, Father God. Bring them to a place, Lord God, where they're, they're committed to you, Father God. They'll say, yes, Lord, and they'll serve you with all their heart, all their life all their mind, Lord God. They'll give all to you, Father. That's what matters is doing your will and then cont continuing to reflect your glory on this earth by allowing our light to shine. Let not their light be dampened or, or covered and smothered by the dark clouds. Let it bright shine brightly, Lord God, in the darkness. Help us all, Lord God. We need you today, Father God. We need your help. Let your grace be upon us, Father God, in the midst of our weakness and allow us, Lord God, to continue to keep standing. Help us to stand, Lord God. Help us to stand. We thank you, Lord. We love you. Oh, God, we thank you for being an ever-present help. We thank you for healing our hearts, Lord God, and binding up our wounds, Lord. We bless you, Father. We thank you for this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. May y'all continue to um, be blessed. If y'all need anything, questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to shoot us a message. We would love to be able to help you. Keep praying for us as we're working through life, right? Working through life and the grace. And we're trying to continue to just be focused on doing his will in the season. I want to be faithful to God. I want to, I'm going to be God honoring and God pleasing. And to do that, we got to be able to see clearly. We got to be able to move the clouds. And the clouds, we may not be able to move past them right now, right? Some things we got to go through. But we got to be able to see God in the midst of it all. Don't allow what you're going through to change your perspective of him. Because when you do that, that's when you fall into great danger and trouble. Amen? So until the next time, y'all, y'all be blessed. And then uh, y'all have any questions, comments, concerns, or prayer requests, please feel free to reach out to us. Until that next time, keep looking to the hills. God bless you. Love you all. Take care.